You're listening to Year One from Carnegie Learning, a podcast that chronicles all the ups and downs of one teacher's first year in the classroom. I'm Kanika Chadda Gupta, CNN journalist turned podcast host and mother of three. On my podcast, That's Total Mom Sense, I aim to give credit where it's often overlooked, the lasting impact of mindful parenting. And here on Year One, I want to shine a light on the people who are also helping to raise the next generation, teachers. The first day of school is fast approaching. Soon, these halls will be filled with excited and nervous elementary school kids. Cubby hooks will be bursting with backpacks. Book corners will look a little less pristine. Parents will sigh with relief or maybe shed a tear as they pull away from drop-off. And across the country, many teachers are stepping into their first years on the job in the midst of a national teacher shortage. 86% of school districts came up short when they attempted to fill open positions for the 2023 through 24 school year. And about 70% of educators say their schools are understaffed with more students to teach and fewer educators to do it. The reasons are as varied as they are numerous, with teachers' salaries remaining a primary sticking point. And yet, first-year educators like Jenna are starting their first year in the classroom despite the challenges of their profession. I've wanted to be a teacher ever since I was younger. I'm the youngest of four, so I spent a few years at home with my mom while all of my older siblings were at school. So I felt so left out. I just wanted to go to school. That's all I wanted to do. So in our basement, we had this like extra room that I would set up and I would like, you know, teach my students how to add on little whiteboards. My students were my stuffed animals, you know, and we would set up little chairs and do the whole school situation in the basement. I'm pretty sure I just like printed off worksheets like I would make like three copies of one work like I would go on Google and I would look up like math worksheet like literally that's what I look up and then I would press the first one and I would hit print 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 one for each chair in the room I was just that kid who like loved school so much like every time I went I was always the one who was like hey let me pass out papers hey let me organize your stuff hey let me grade this for you like I don't know there was just something about it that felt so comfortable to me So I think it was just always the goal. I don't think I've ever thought of myself as anything else but a teacher. So when it was time to go to college and decide what I wanted to do, it was a no-brainer. For Jenna, teaching isn't just a job. It's practically in her DNA. I always knew Jenna was meant to be a teacher. This is Jenna's mom, Jory, who recently retired after a long career as a teacher herself. I encouraged her as much as I warned her, (laughs) but I did encourage her because she is like one of the most patient people that I've ever experienced in my life. So I knew she had, no, I knew you had it. I mean, I, I always told her, I know you can do this. I know you can do this. Yeah. Ever since I was literally four or five years old, I've just had this instinct to teach others and to just, you know entertain and to inspire other people. So my mom was actually a teacher before she had us. So she actually stopped teaching to be a stay-at-home mom. But then once I was about in, I want to say fourth or fifth grade, she went back into the profession. I went to Illinois State University and there was a waiting list to get into the teaching programs. So once I applied, I had to wait an extra semester to get in. So I knew I was very devoted to it because I stayed an extra semester. I was engaged and, you know, I was like, I got to get this done. So wound up getting my degree. I taught in Chicago. Well, my path was I couldn't get a job right away because there were just not enough jobs, which was crazy. But I applied so many schools in the Chicago area. Finally landed a like a kindergarten aid position which kind of then rolled into an elementary aid position. And then I worked my way up to a third grade position. So did that for a little bit, then got married and had babies and (laughs) was a stay-at-home mom for a very long time. 
having her being a teacher during my growing up, especially during the years where like, you know, you started to think about your future, like middle school, high school, you know, it was a great way to kind of bring it to reality. It wasn't just an idea out in the blue. It was, oh, I see what she's doing. Obviously, my journey's going to be different. But, you know, I have that example in front of me. And as Jenna prepares her third grade classroom for her first year of teaching, she finds herself reflecting on the inspiration she's hoping to model when those kids walk through the door on her first day of school. I think the first teacher that really inspired me to be a teacher was my third grade teacher, which is actually funny because now as a first year teacher, I'm teaching third grade and I never thought that that was a grade that I would really want to teach, but here I am. I think there's such a big transition from second to third grade in elementary because you're no longer just like going to school to learn how to write and learning how to read and learning how to do the basics of addition and subtraction and all that fun stuff, but you're actually using what you've learned in those primary grades to start doing other things. So I think my third grade teacher made learning so much more fun because of that step. She was like, see all the skills that you know how to do now and how you can apply them to other things. I remember in third grade, we did a lot of like hands-on experiments. So we did a lot of hands-on projects, lots of participation in working with others, which I really enjoyed. And she was also one of those teachers that definitely, I was kind of a little brown noser and she would let me help with a bunch of different tasks, like going to, you know, clap the, the chalkboard erasers outside if she needed someone to do that or to grade the papers or stuff them in the mailboxes and stuff. Like, I definitely felt like I was her own little personal assistant. So she was definitely the first influence that I had where I was like, you know what, I could be you and I grow up. I could definitely do something like this. Jenna's passion for teaching stuck with her through high school. By the time she was ready to go to college, getting a degree in teaching felt natural, like a no-brainer. Going to college for teaching just seemed like, it seemed like what I needed to do, and it also seemed like a very safe thing to do, because obviously there's a teacher shortage in our world, and, you know, I knew that I would be able to get a teaching job, and that was something that I was, like, proud of and confident in. My freshman year was when COVID hit. So I was actually sent home in March and I was bummed because a lot of that field experience got taken away from me. It would be like half the time on the campus and the other half the time at the school. And that ended up getting canceled on me because of COVID. So I was really bummed about that and I had to take a lot of my classes online. But then honestly, the best thing that ever happened to me was signing up for this program. I forget what it was called. I was scheduled from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., but every single one of my classes was at an elementary school. When the elementary school's bell rang at 8.30, we would split off into our classrooms and essentially be in a student teacher, even though we weren't seniors yet. We would be in that classroom. Everyone was paired up, so everyone had, like, a friend to be with them or, like, someone there just as that little support. But there was an odd number, and I was that one who got placed by myself. It was just me in a fifth grade classroom. And honestly, I feel like being alone was like the best thing that could have happened to me because I didn't have that other person to lean on or like hide behind or do anything. I had to put in the work and I had to figure it out by myself as I went on. We would be in the classroom all day for the whole entire school day. And then 30 minutes before the kids would leave, we would be dismissed to go back to the library to do our second set of college classes until 4.30. So we were there literally all day long. Like it was a commitment. So yeah, I definitely had to seek out those experiences in college that made me feel prepared. Like they weren't just handed to me. I had to do my research and, you know, befriend the right professors who knew of the programs and that sort of thing. But like, once I was in it, I knew that I had like hit the jackpot. By the end of her college experience, Jenna felt prepared to take the teaching world by storm. But she also understood that this occupation is not without its challenges. For better or for worse, she's facing those challenges along with her boyfriend, Liam. I'm Liam. My focus is teaching like K through 12 music, specifically choir. My passion definitely lies with teaching like older kids and doing like choral ensemble work. And it didn't come without real discussion from both of them about the lifestyle they'd potentially be taking on as they consider a future together. Two teachers. Two teachers' incomes. I think a lot of people put pressure on future educators to 
not look at the financial situation and to just be like, oh, it's, you got to do it for the kids. What's your why? Like you got to, you know, it's, it's not about the money. It's about the impact that you're making on these kids. And like, yes, that's true. That's totally true. But also it's a job. Talking to one of my coworkers is kind of the opposite where she was talking to me about her husband. Now he works like this nice cushy job. And she's like, yeah, this is really just like the fun money job. But sometimes I think about quitting and it's like, oh, that must be delightful. But this job is just the fun money job and that your significant other works in another sector where they make enough to supply for both of you doesn't work in education. It's like, oh, you kind of get that perspective of like, oh, that's what the other side is like, where you make significantly more money, you might have better benefits, things like that. And it's like this job can just be for fun. According to the National Education Association, the national average teacher salary for the 2022-2023 school year was $68,469. While that was nearly a 3% increase from the previous year, there's still a deficit when you take inflation into account. Teachers are making an average of $3,644 less than they did 10 years ago when adjusted for inflation. This is something that Jenna knew coming into her career, but it didn't make it less scary. The pay as a first-year teacher is scary, especially if you are living on your own. Like, I feel like there are very few people who are still like living with their parents or still in a living situation where they don't have to pay rent and utilities and your car bill and your phone bill and all of these things. Like, if you are set up to be a financially independent adult by the time you get your first teaching job, almost all of your paycheck will be going to all of these different things. And that's scary. I remember over the summer when I was getting some offers from some different schools, but I sat down with my dad and I budgeted out like what that would look like so I could compare and contrast. And then also I did that again with him. I sat down, he gave me a little sheet and walked me through it when I got my apartment and then we did it again when I got my car. So it's like every time there's a big financial thing, I'm very, very lucky to have my dad in the picture who can sit me down and kind of talk me through it because I know a lot of people my age do not either one, have that relationship with their parents or two, have any sort of support when it comes to finances and how to be able to set yourself up for success as a young adult in the world where everything is getting more expensive and more complicated as the years go on. I'm very lucky. While baseline teacher pay in the first year isn't drastically less than the baseline pay for other career paths for a student fresh out of school, a big financial differentiator for first-year teachers is outfitting their classroom. I have some posters and, you know, in front of my door frame inside of my classroom, I have little like affirmations, like little circle cutouts that say like, you are loved, you are talented, you're creative, like all those things. As a first-year teacher, Jenna had no idea what she was going to be walking into as far as resources and materials for her classroom goes. She knew that no matter what, she'd have to be responsible for outfitting her classroom with most of the materials that she needed. But since she was a recent graduate, she didn't have the funds to outfit her classroom. And when she came in to see her new classroom just weeks before the school year kicked off, she quickly realized that she was truly starting from scratch. I didn't have any leftover like classroom materials in my room. Now my new teacher friend across the hall is a different story because her room that she moved into was one of the old third grade rooms in the first place. So she got a bunch of old materials, a bunch of old books, a bunch of old everything. I did not. For many teachers like Jenna, the upfront expense of making sure they have what they need to make the classroom not only comfortable, but also provide the basics that the students need in order to learn are significant. Luckily, Jenna had learned from a few other teacher friends a way to get some help. I made a Amazon wish list that a lot of my, you know, family and friends and my mom's friends and, you know, all of those different people were very supportive of. But at the end of the day, I did have to take out a lot of my own money to pay for things for my room. Like even for last minute, like grocery store stops on the way to and from to like get things that I needed to be able to hang things up or get command strips or whatever. It really added up with my own money. Jenna soon found out that she'd be able to get some help from the school, but wouldn't cover nearly the amount she'd spend out of pocket to get the resources and materials she'd need. 
My school does have a PTO system set up with classroom funds where I think you get like $200 or something. And if you send them your receipts, then you can get it back, which is nice and generous. Mm -hmm. But I know a lot of other schools have bigger funds for that. Like my boyfriend was telling me that he gets like 500 something dollars as a first year teacher for his classroom. And I was like, you teach music. Like you don't even need anything. Like you need a piano and you'll be fine. I have to buy pencils and erasers and markers and crayons. And like, yeah. So it was just, I got some money from my school and from the PTO, but definitely a lot of it was still out of my pocket in order to have like a fully functioning classroom with everything that it needs. And even as Jenna started to get her classroom set up, she was still finding out new information that required more of her own money. It was surprising because there are a lot of little things that you didn't even think of. I mentioned command strips and I didn't even realize that I would need those, but I got an email from our like facility lady, our school saying like, hey, no pins in the walls, no staples in the walls. So then I was like, oh, okay, well, I need to go buy 8 million command strips then. And, you know, they're expensive and they added up. While Jenna had a lot of freedom in setting up her classroom, she also quickly learned that each school and administration has its own nuances for what they'd like included in each classroom. So it is essentially your room is your room, but they made it clear to us that it really helps if you have these things. And when your principal or vice principal comes for an observation, they would love to see your I can statements on the board for like science. I can explain the life cycle of a plant or something like that on the board. And also something that this school is super big on that my student teaching placement wasn't was like those giant post-it note anchor charts honestly almost work as a little cheat sheet for your student what you need to know from the lesson sort of thing and they're super helpful but yeah I never really used those at my student teaching and basically at the school everyone's wall is decorated to be able to fit these anchor charts so even though it wasn't necessarily required you know just walking around the school and seeing everyone's different setups every single room is basically set up to have those giant anchor charts on the wall. I was pretty anxious for her the first day. I could not wait to talk to her afterwards. I had been at the school with her a few times, helping her set up her room. And, you know, and she'll be the first to admit she was very focused on setting up her room because that's what you, that is the fun part. That's the stuff you can prepare for. And it's like the only thing you can prepare for. It's the only thing you can prepare for. It's the only thing you can control after you get the job. Absolutely. Like literally all you can do is buy things and, and like figure out where you're going to hang them. Like that's literally the only thing you can do for two months. And then you get your kids' names and you're like, yay, I have control over this because I can write their names. <laughs> I know. And- I was like, I can label <laughs> things now. But, but I knew, I knew what she was in for, but I couldn't. I had to bite my tongue because I didn't know what her experience was going to be, but I certainly remember mine. (laughs) It's like you're putting your feet to the fire. You, you really don't know what you're going to get. You don't know the combination of children you're going to get. You don't know the issues that are going to be thrown at you the first day, the first week, the first month, the first semester, you know, you just, it's just kind of like you just have to trust and you just have to trust your instincts and go with your gut. Jenna has literally been preparing for years for this moment, and it's all coming to life before her eyes. The classroom organization hacks that she'd been saving on Pinterest since she was 14, the bookshelf filled with books she's been collecting and scouring neighborhood garage sales for since she started college classes, all of it is taking shape. For Jenna and the nearly 600,000 other first-year teachers in the U.S., this is their story. They came bright-eyed and excited into this profession. They'd weighed the pros and cons of the lifestyle and the paycheck, and they've chosen to teach. The question is, how long will that decision sustain them? When faced with the realities of the profession, realities that have contributed to a national teacher shortage, will first years like Jenna still hold fast her decision to become a teacher? or reluctantly leave the struggle behind for something more lucrative and less all-consuming. For Jenna, the journey to answer that question starts with an open house the day before the first day of school, Jenna's first opportunity to meet her students and their parents 
as their official third grade teacher. It's important for parents to meet me because I was able to tell them that like, hey, I'm a first year teacher, I'm gonna make mistakes. This is year one, an exploration of one teacher's first year in the classroom, brought to you by Carnegie Learning. Join us for the rest of the series as we follow Jenna through every moment and be sure to follow her at miss.mcnulty on Instagram and TikTok. For exclusive additional content, free teaching resources, and more, visit year1podcast.com.